So when Lilith was sitting around thinking, okay, what commander should we add next into rise of kingdoms? Somebody was just like, why don't we just add CPO again? And they were like, dude, that is a sick idea. You seriously, you can't make this stuff up. What's going on guys. Cheers. My boy CPO is got a new fresh coat of paint. They basically just gave him black armor and made his little, uh, his little broom thing on the top of his head a little bit bigger. Okay. That's pretty much that's pretty much what it looks like to me okay they made his armor black maybe it's a little bit better armor and they threw a little wolf on the front here oh and they replaced one of his swords with this pretty cool shield i guess but can you guys help me understand why they would add cpo again i'm just really confused and i know that i'm sort of like hung up on that right but like there's so many historical figures that they could have added and then they just decided to go with cpo again my best guess is that cpo is good from a marketing perspective i think because CPO is is like a fan favorite in this game, right? For some reason, new players see this commander and as an epic, they're like, oh, he looks really cool. Swords are sick. Like he's just, he's just badass. Okay. He's just badass. And so maybe they were just like, oh, let's just try to reproduce that success again. Like, oh, because so many people love CPO, let's actually make him usable basically is what I'm thinking. I don't know. Honestly, I feel like this, this could have been an opportunity for them to do a sort of prestige system where you, you know, after you've maxed out a commander, you can prestige them by investing some number of excess sculptures in, sculptures into them or something like that to make them beefy and strong and usable or whatever but that's not the case okay they just threw cpo on the wheel of fortune okay so we know cpo is going to be on the wheel flavius at at adius flavius i don't know he's going to be the mightiest governor commander here and we're going to go over the skills i'm going to talk first about cpo because he is actually the most exciting part about uh about these two new commanders okay this is going to be the number one best I'm predicting this now before it even comes out. This is going to be probably the best infantry commander to invest in as a free to play player. Now, the downside of him is that he's only available in season of conquest, whereas Alexander and Guan Yu, you can get your hands on them earlier, right? But once you've entered the season of conquest, I think free to play players, no questions. And even of course, obviously if you're paid to win, but especially free to play players will absolutely need this cpo legendary variant because he is so good when you take a look at his skills there is massive amounts of power creep here and the fact that he's going to be on the wheel of fortune means that even free to play players will be able to summon him and invest in him and maybe even slow max him over time with their gems he's insanely good okay and we're going to talk about his skills in a second but first what's this little p down here what's this what's this little p uh, you guys know what the, you i've never seen this before am i am i go going crazy like what does that even mean does that mean prestige what is this i don't understand i don't see it it's on every screenshot here for everything every screenshot that he's in it's not even on flavius you see it there's a little p right there i don't know what that means so if you guys know what that is let me know maybe i'm maybe i'm just stupid i'm not sure but anyway his primary skill is called unmatched strength and i think that's a pretty accurate name for this new legendary CPO. Okay. Deals direct damage to up to three targets in a forward facing fan shaped area with a damage factor of 2000 damage delta. Each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target. This is Guan Yu levels of AOE without needing to be the primary, which means you could literally do Guan primary CPO secondary and have two commanders dealing 2000 damage factor AOE, which is actually insane. Not only that though, he also applies a 30% health reduction to all targets hit by this skill, which means you would be silencing them with Guan and you would also be reducing their health with CPO. This is like the most insane AOE combo ever, but there's a downside to doing a Guan CPO. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I think it's a good combination, but I'm not sure. I'm not confident that it's going to be insane. It might be, but there, we'll talk about it. Let's move on to his next skill. That primary is just, it's just OP. It's just absolutely insane. It reminds me basically of XY right except it deals a little bit more damage and it debuffs a more important stat however it costs a thousand rage so xy obviously has a 900 rage requirement that's what makes him so insane at popping off skills this is basically just a better version of xy's primary skill and it just costs a little bit more but 
there, his, the expertise on CPO is gonna okay there's just so much going on here okay there's so much going on his second skill increases infantry attack by 40 percent with a 15 percent boost to March speed and a total of 25 percent boost to March speed if you're outside your alliance territory so this is really good uh infantry are the slowest troop type okay they take forever to go around the battlefield you know this and having this extra March speed is gonna be incredible I love to see that 40% attack is not great I'm not in love with that as a stat but there's no denying that the damage output from CPO is going to be top tier now I think this is going to be really good in open field not necessarily good for rallies and we'll talk about why in just a second and like you can compare this to Guan Yu again like Guan Yu's third skill gives you 30 percent infantry attack another 15 percent March speed right you also have that healing factor there when you leave battle which is nice so it's literally just like almost the same thing as Guan Yu we're seeing a very similar commander to Guan Yu here except slightly better and Guan Yu is already insanely good now Guan's silence is what makes him super super good and I don't and I'm not trying to take away from Guan Yu here I still think Guan Yu is a must invest commander especially for infantry players but we're just seeing so much out of CPO already let's move on to his third skill increases infantry units health by 20 percent when attacking troops and grants each attack a 10 percent chance of dealing continuous additional damage for three seconds with a damage factor of 500 you can only trigger once every eight seconds so you get 20 percent health when attacking troops which means you will not get this if you are hitting a flag or a fortress or a pass or anything like that so you must be attacking troops it probably will work when you're counter rallying so cpo could be like king of counter rallies at this point i don't know but that that's going to be busted good okay so 20 percent infantry health is the number one thing you want for infantry right you're already getting 40 percent attack now you get 20 percent health for open field which is what you're going to be doing with him okay and that's what most players are doing anyway right like most players are not rallying or not garrison commanders like that's just what you're going to be doing is open field fighting and you get insanely good stats for doing so now we're also seeing a 10 percent chance to deal 1500 damage factor now you do have an eight second cooldown here but like that's actually crazy now i guess it's not as good as guan's fourth skill okay where you're dealing uh, a similar amount of additional fact damage factor all at once with a 50 percent chance as long as you hit multiple enemies so this is dealing a little bit more damage factor but it's over time and it's a 10 percent chance so again it's similar but it's just triggered in a different way with a different probability but you also get that health bonus which is just it's just so good moving on to his fourth skill it says when troops on the map take skill damage uh, i don't know what this means I, I assume this means when this army like when cpo's army not any troop on the map right i think it's when cpo's army on the map takes skill damage there's a 50 percent chance of reducing that damage by 30 percent and forming a shield that covers up to three allied troops for three seconds with a damage factor of 500 this effect triggers once every eight seconds so we see another cooldown here another eight second cooldown and we also see another skill that only takes effect on the map so if cpo is in a garrison right this is not going to apply so that's why like this is a, sort of like an alexander right a lot of Alexander's skills work on the map but they don't necessarily work in other ways CPO it looks like is going to be similar in that all his skills are really good but they're only good in the open field which great news that's where a lot of you guys are going to be fighting anyway now we get if we compare this to Alexander right he gives himself a shield and one ally a 600 damage factor shield for uh two seconds whereas CPO gives three of your allies a 500 damage factor shield for three seconds so overall it's just it's so good right it's like we're seeing a combination of guan and alex all in one commander on top of a little bit of inspiration from chook here right chook is another infantry commander that doesn't get a lot of love but he does have the 40 percent chance to take 50 percent less skill damage uh and here we see you know a 30 percent um skill damage taken reduction with a 50 percent chance of it happening so it's just like they took a little bit of every infantry commander and put them all into cpo and it's it's super good let's take a look at his uh expertise it says increases skill damage dealt by 10 percent like okay as if you weren't dealing enough skill damage as it is you're dealing 10 percent more now and when the target is silenced rage grows 30 percent faster so what commander can we think of that is great at silencing other targets well Guan Yu is the number one infantry commander uh for open field fighting and his primary skill does a three second silence which means for those three seconds after 
Guan hits with his primary, CPO is going to get 30% more rage. The synergy there is insane. And this is why I was talking about his primary skill being sort of just a better version of XY, even though XY costs a hundred less rage. Um, this is, it's a better skill and you're going to have opportunities to gain rage faster with CPO. If you pair him with somebody like Guan Yu. So again, th this is a must max legendary, probably for pretty much anybody who plays rise of kingdoms, but especially if you are an infantry main player, this is what infantry has needed for a while. We saw Pakal and Chuk come out and they're fine, right? They're fine, but they weren't game breaking. This changes the meta for open field fighting without a doubt in a similar way that XY and Nevsky have for cavalry. When it comes to pairings with this new CPO, I think he's going to fit with a lot of commanders, right? Obviously Guan Yu is a great option. The only thing that I'm worried about with a Guan CPO pairing, and obviously you would do Guan primary is that you have a ton of attack and 20% infantry health. But other than that, you don't really have any way of, you know, sustaining yourself in the open field. Now you do take a little bit less skill damage with CPO and things like that, but the, the Guan is one of the commanders that is almost always swarmed down, right? Like he's just so devastating in the open field with his silence, with his AOE that he just gets swarmed down. Like he just has to be right. So if you throw CPO behind him, like, yeah, he's even more devastating, but he's already such a target and CPO is not doing anything to help Guan stay alive, which is why Guan Leo is such a good combination because Leo's a little bit tanky. He gives you that extra health. There's just a lot of good synergy between Guan and Leo, which is why that combination is so good in the open field. So yes, a Guan CPO is going to be an absolute machine at dealing insane skill damage, not only with their active skills, but also with the additional damage over time for both commanders and the expertise on CPO giving you 10% more skill damage. It's just insane. But I think that you're probably going to get swarmed down instantaneously. Okay. So when it comes to pairings for CPO, Guan is a good one. Uh, we can't really look too much at Harold, right? I think Harold has a similar issue like with Guan, uh, where it's just going to get swarmed down. I, I really just think it's going to get swarmed down. That's, that's a huge problem. I think Alexander is going to be a great pairing. It also, again, might be a little squishy in the open field. You do get get that nice shield from Alex, which is great. Your damage, uh, your damage can't be reduced with this second skill on Alex, which is just absolutely insane. When you don't have the shield up for Alex, you're also going to get some more defense, which is again, it's that little bit of tankiness that I think CPO is actually going to need, but also you have the attack tree on Alexander, which really punishes the enemy. If you get swarmed, like the burning blood talent is just so good for that reason, because you're going to be getting a ton of extra rage and just pumping out that 2000 damage factor AOE from CPO, as well as giving you that shield. And the more you have the shield, the more you're going to have that 30% defense, which you need. And also because I predict that CPO is going to be so OP in the open field that everyone's going to be using him. Uh, you're just going to be gaining lots of extra shields just in general. Like there's just going to be more shields in the open field period at this point, right? He gives three of them. He gives th for every CPO there's on the field. There's going to be three shields that come out like every 10 seconds. It's going to be absolutely insane. So the probability that you'll have a shield, uh, moving forward is just going to go up. So that is exceptionally good. And also with Guan Yu, obviously this is sort of like a passive outcome, right? But if there's just more shields in the open field, you're just going to have more opportunities to gain that 15% skill damage for three seconds. So again, I think Alexander primary CPO secondary is going to be great. Um, I'm just a little worried again about how uh, easily it could be swarmed down. I think Pakal is another interesting one we can consider. I think Pakal Herald is already so good as a pair that I don't know if Pakal CPO would be better. We'll have to test it out. But I think there's potential there for this to be an insane combination. Obviously, you have the tankiness with Pakal that CPO needs to stay alive in the open field. You have the defense tree. You have the shield here. You also have the 30% infantry health. And people always forget that Pakal also has March speed, right? He has 15% March speed in the open field, plus the 25% you'll have if you're in enemy territory or at least outside of Alliance territory with CPO. So a total of 40% potentially March speed on infantry will be insane. 
plus you have the reduce of damage taken there's a lot that you can you can consider with a pakal cpo combo so we'll have to see um i think pakal cpo and alex cpo are going to be the most uh, prominent pairs that we'll see with this new cpo legendary coming into the game but one thing is for sure and that is that this is going to be an absolute monster and if he is tanky enough with that 20 percent health then maybe guan cpo will be the ultimate golden standard for open field marches especially when it comes to infantry now we should talk about flavius as well because we've talked a ton about cpo and honestly cpo is way more exciting to me than flavius because flavius is going to be potentially a very powerful garrison commander but most of you watching are not going to be garrison leaders so it doesn't really impact the game as much as cpo will from your own personal perspective but there is an opportunity here where we see a full pure infantry garrison come back with Zenobia primary Flavius secondary the real question is going to be though is this going to be better than YSS as a secondary and that's what I'm not sure about now we do see a massive single target damage factor on the primary for Flavius and if the target has been reduced to 50 percent or fewer units remaining you deal continuous damage for three seconds so the, a total of 450 additional damage factor as well and this is going to function similarly um to well i guess not exactly like but one of the good things about yss is that when your army gets below that 50 percent mark uh, you get a really powerful buff here on uh where is it on the second skill sorry his third skill when you are below 50 percent you do 20 percent increased damage which is just insane for this it's going to be the rally right and this takes into account the total number of troops that are in that rally so it's not as good of a condition as yss because the garrison takes into account like slightly wounded units and all that stuff uh whereas a rally only launches with full healthy units but eventually uh and pretty quickly within that rally um it's gonna drop below 50 percent units remaining so you're gonna be dealing a ton of extra damage factor on that as well here we see 45 percent of stats 10 percent of it is attack and if you are in a garrison the other 30 percent is 15 percent defense 15 percent health this is a nice spread across the board it's it's straightforward like if you're in a garrison you get a ton of stats i'd like to see it defense of the gall increases troops counterattack damage by 20 percent when troops are garrisoned normal attacks inflict uh inflict a debuff on the target that increases the damage they take from infantry by one percent for 15 seconds stacking up to 10 times this effect triggers once every 10 seconds so it looks like there's a 100 chance that this inflicts the one percent debuff uh, but it only does it once every 10 seconds so for a longer fight um eventually they will get to a 10 percent uh, damage taken increase but from infantry and obviously you know if you're having him in your garrison it's going to be a full infantry garrison so the longer the fights with this guy go on i think the more detrimental it's going to be let's take a look at the fourth skill it says increases all damage dealt by 10 percent just flat flat out just that's good when launching a normal attack against a target inflicted with an additional damage effect there is a 100 chance of inflicting silence for two seconds you can trigger once every seven seconds so consistently silencing the target for two seconds over and over and over again every seven seconds looks like the fastest it could be is going to be really good when you have a rally like nevsky and xy that just rely on constant pumping out massive skill damage and the more that this goes off the higher the probability it will land during their skill cycles so we're seeing a lot of interesting abilities coming out of flavius here and then finally his expertise decreases all damage taken by 10 percent it also says when using an active skill there's a 30 percent chance of inflicting two stacks of a debuff on the target troop each stack increases their damage taken from infantry by one percent for 15 seconds stacking up to 10 times this effect triggers once every 10 seconds so this just looks like it applies the same stacks as the third skill so it kind of just gets you to that maximum number of stacks faster which is what i'm assuming if this is a completely separate set of stacks i feel like that would be insane right it couldn't possibly be that they could take a total of 20 percent increased damage from infantry right I mean the only reason I say that is because it says this is a new skill which you know that may imply that it's completely separate 
from defense of the gall but i can't imagine that's the case i imagine this probably will just add two stacks to the third skill so overall uh, i think zenobia flavius could be insane i think flavius is doomed to always be secondary because of that skill tree but is he going to be better than a yss that's what we really have to test and see obviously the fact that yss kind of gives you a little bit of wiggle room to have mixed troops is really good so i think yss is still going to be very relevant especially in not just kvk but in other game modes as well but flavius could be he could be the answer to the uh to the nevsky rallies I'm, I'm not sure maybe maybe not we'll have to test it out but without a doubt i am most interested in cpo and this is a commander that i will be absolutely expertising as soon as possible i'll probably max spin the first wheel and then just finish him right from there that way i can start using him as soon as possible anyway guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps the channel out a ton it helps get this out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you guys know what this p is don't forget to put that in the comment section below i'm curious about that also in case you're wondering you're not going to be able to use cpo legendary with a cpo epic so you won't be able to pair those two together because they're the same person so keep that in mind not that anyone was considering that but maybe in like canyon you were i don't know but regardless you can't pair the two cpos together uh with that being said guys if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kings video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon